we are here today. We're going to look at this uh, uh, rep Jeff Van Drew at, at the uh, Oida's Lewis Pug on trucker overtime pay. And we're just going to see, you know, exactly what these people think about you getting paid for what you do. And we'll stop it periodically to figure out what do they mean by that? It's only one minute long. We're going to jump to another clip, too. It's part of a greater discussion on where the industry is going and how these people that we make billionaires feel about you. So let's just see them discussing your future without a crowd of truckers in the room. To the hard working men and women who do this job. It is a hard job. I know truckers well. It's a hard job. I know I couldn't do it. Mr. Pugh, these questions are for you. I got one on time for one. Is there any reason that truckers shouldn't be paid overtime like most other blue collar employees? And if this exemption were to be repealed, what do you think the impact would be? How could you find a reason for someone not to be paid overtime if they're at work? Um, I think, for one, truckers, if the impact would be truckers would have a greater love for Congress. And yes, I think it will improve safety. It will improve drivers' lives. It will improve retention. The same people that are pushing for speed limiters because they say trucks need to slow down are the same people that are against paying truckers overtime. Truck Come on now. This guy, he's a saint. The same People, think about it. Trucking for as long has been a piecework industry where you're paid by the mile. Right. My opinion would be if you pay truckers by the mile and you have some crazy concern that truckers are going flying down the highway, which they're not, but if that's what you think, probably paying them by the hour and paying them overtime would automatically put them to where they should be going if that's what you're trying to get at. Yeah, if, if it was about safety. You wouldn't be paying them by the mile because a person would run more miles to make more money, which means faster. If you're paying someone, the, the, really, the real worry is if I pay you by the hour, you won't go fast. They want you to go fast. It's that simple. They want to. I'm not going to say they want you to go fast. They want you to move more loads. And what's a faster way of moving more loads? Going faster. That's why they pay you as, as you go. So you never have a chance to BS. If you BS, they can pay you less. They don't want to pay you hourly. Come on now. Now we have to have this conversation whether to pay you more, whether to pay you less. It'd be way easier if you weren't in the truck at all. And we know that is what the end goal is. Get out of the truck at all so I don't have to worry about human rights at all and I can keep all the money in my pocket. Period. That's what this is about. That's what it falls down to. This conversation is, is getting old. Bring in AI. But, you know, Mr. Spear, when you say that small truckers, you, you know, you, you can look those folks in the eye and say that their job is always going to be there. When will one of these uppity tech CEO guys ever look a trucker in the eye? When you come up with legislation, you come up with ways to inflate the money to make sure they can't live next to you. You'll never look one of us in the eye. And I say this, and I don't know you, so I don't say this in any dispersion at all to you. Um, you know, in all my years, of, my years of being in Congress and being in the state Senate, I had a lot of people look me right in the eye and say something wasn't going to happen, and it sure did. Man, is he not speaking the gospel? How many times has a driver went to a company and they told them they're going to make $70 million the first day and they end up not getting their check at all or there's not enough loads to keep them going? You look us in the eye and lie to us all the time. Um, as the years go by, uh, it's going to be cheaper for you to do it automated eventually. Um, and it's going to be, you know, maybe easier. I don't know, because we're going to have to see what the outcome is. But I feel we're losing small businesses in this country at every level. Uh, Mr. Burleson talked about farms. And yeah, I know that now people can do other jobs, but a lot of people like having a small family farm. They can't do it. Screw what they like. Screw what their traditions are. Screw their families being secure. 
Lots of folks have their small trucking companies. I have 93 towns. One of them, Vineland, has a number of tr small trucking companies and family owned through multiple generations. That in reality, if you look into the future, if we're not careful is the way this is gonna go. Um, do you ever envision um, AI taking- Pay attention. Pay attention taking care of all the services that these trucks will need as far as um you know tune-ups and you know the still the basic things that have to be done the vehicles so i, I can you talk know, yeah whoever wants to answer if, if that's okay thank you for the question mr ermson i gotta remember these names remember the names and what company they work for these people right here that don't even want you to drive through their neighborhood, who put up all the no truck signs, who don't want you to be able to live in their neighborhood. Look at their faces. They would spit on you. I don't want truck stops in my city. That's these people. Deciding you. And, and this is why we are actually investing in training and accreditation programs. So we work with the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Technical College, where we're working with them to develop training for vehicle service technicians for this industry. We're working with Gallatin College in Bozeman, Montana, to develop sensor training or sensor technician training and development. So we are trying to help develop the, the upscaling. Other words, get out the truck with your bad back, your bad health, running you to death, no good sleep schedule, haven't been using your intellect for a long time. All you've been doing is just counting miles, doing a... They want you to get out of that and go get some technical computer training to learn how to fix the truck you used to drive with your bad back. And they're going to hire you over an 18, 22-year-old with a great back and a bunch of tech experience? Give me a break. For the workforce of the future. Okay. Um, You're not in the future. He's talking, about, he's talking about setting up a program for kids to go into. He ain't talking about the people who's going to lose their job. In, in the future, do you ever anticipate that? Listen, listen. I mean, after you're gone and I'm gone, I'll be going first. But um, do you ever anticipate that there will be a time when everything will be automated, including the service work that needs to be done and everything else? I mean, if, if we can drive huge trucks on the road automated, I don't know why we couldn't do the service automated. I mean, literally, do you picture a time Generations in the future, will you be a totally automated company and there'll only be corporate leadership? Mr. Van Drew, uh, I don't know anything about his other politics. I don't know anything about his other policies. I don't know any of that. In this section, this man is giving you no room. Yes. That's what the next guy wants to say to him. Yes, you idiot. You and I know that we want these people to never make money again. We want to keep the money. That will be human. Look at this next dude. Can you imagine? <laughs> what does this dude think of a laborer? What does he think of a laborer? Look at him. What does he think? Screw them, they should have went to Harvard. I don't think my imagination is, is, is that big. Uh, but what I your imagination is not that big, but you preside over the company or you speak for the company that had the imagination to take the driver out of the truck and the truck to keep rolling down the road. I could what I would reflect on is that if I, I think back to time well before me, you know, the 15th century, 16th century, I think the folks looking forward to the jobs of today wouldn't even be able to fathom them. Uh, and I would expect that there's going to be incredible new opportunities that are afforded by innovation. And new opportunities means new people. And that's the people they choose to put in those situations. Are we going to be taking these schools and putting them in Western Virginia, in rural areas? Are we going to be putting them in Chicago and Virginia and Atlanta? Are we going to be putting them in rural Texas? Are we going to be putting them in Kansas? and taking up all these laborers to come in here and get technical work? Is that where you're going to put these schools? That's what you're, those are the people you want? Do we already have the funding for this training to be free? Is it going to be the same type of free to get into as trucking was?
or is there going to be a money cap for this technical training? What type of people, Mr. Erzman, Ermson? I don't know how to say your name, dude. It's weird. I don't know how to say, I don't know how to say your name. I don't even know what's going on with that. I would say is Ermson, I would say. Are you going to put these in these places? Well, uh, I don't know if we are, but you know that's where the trucking recruiting is. is it stays at, right? It stays in the middle of Arkansas and the rural areas. It stays in, in all of the urban areas. That's where they pay for their marketing to go. To pull them people to come up by their bootstraps. Are you going to return that opportunity? I wish I was there. By America leading the way with her. One, one point I would make, too, we spoke about airplanes, and they are automated to a great degree. But there's always two pilots still in the plane. And that's what concerned me. If we were automating, but there would still be somebody, a human being, that knew how to drive a truck in the truck, that's one thing. But the fact that we're just going to have these trucks without any human assistance other than at the terminals still concerns me. Um, exactly. Why would we make it automated for you to be in the truck and not doing anything? You don't have the class to be a pilot and just sit there. Look at the, look at the entry point to be a pilot and look at the entry point to be a trucker. And as soon as they drop the entry point for you to be a, a pilot, they're going to get away with all the French benefits and high and, and high income and all of that. All that's going to go away. In my day, when I was a young buck coming up adolescent in 95, a pilot was a freaking superstar. Not anymore. I believe it was the 80s when the first plane rolled out with the fly by wire. Look at the difference and pay, pay attention to inflation and benefits that they got. Look at their retirement packages and all that stuff to compare it to now. Think about it. But that's how they do you. Um, deadly crap, and I know it's different, and I know the system is different, but still, Tesla, again, folks looked you in the eye and said, man, there's going to be no problems at all. And their vehicles have failed. There was one instance where they failed to see a tractor trailer in the sun in an Uber car in Tempe, Arizona, struck a pedestrian after failing to identify her. And that's only a few of the issues. And I associate myself with some of the comments you made, Ms. Chase. Um, these examples highlight the safety risks that we still do have. And we no one cares about safety. I'm going to link this in the bottom for you all to go watch it and see Mr. Van Drew get into these questions. This is just some of the stuff that's going on. And I think the other guy, uh, it was the other time the dude was saying um, they did this during driver appreciation week. We're discussing the end of drivers during the time we're saying we appreciate them. Isn't that convenient? This video will first be seen on my Patreon. So make sure you go sign up for the Patreon. This is around about where the content on the Patreon is going to be leading to. It's for you to be able to look into the future and see what they're actually wanting to do with you. I appreciate you being here. Make sure you follow the Rumble TV Uncut. Sub to the channel if you're new to this channel. We're out. Trucker Brown here. I'm just here to remind you that we are on Patreon. and It does help out the channel. Thanks to all the people who sub to the Patreon this weekend. I appreciate you. New content is coming there. And these clips that I'm giving you are from the exclusive Trucker Report Live that I do with Phil, which is link is at the bottom on Rumble TV Uncut. So I appreciate y'all. Love the support. If you like the content, man, hit the buttons. Let me know. Thanks for coming to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Just Phil TV coming to you from the Trucking Report exclusively on Rumble with Trucker Brown. You know where to hit it. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Find us exclusively on Rumble if you want to catch these episodes live.